Joblessness in the Inez area is attributable primarily to a general lack of industrialization and losses in the coal mining industry. Inez, Kentucky, 1964. Lyndon Baines Johnson declares his war on poverty here. And then four years later, Bobby Kennedy inspires Appalachian pride as he travels over 200 miles in two days to hear the stories of the families. All of us working together, all of us recognizing our responsibilities, in my judgment, we can have some success. Back then, Bill Gorman was a TV reporter walking the streets of Hazard with Bobby Kennedy. 41 years later, he's the mayor of Hazard, walking the same street with me and saying, it is better. It's changed a whole lot after Bobby visited here. There's been money for new schools and highways, which helped many communities flourish. You have two Appalachians today, communities very similar to what one would find in many suburban places all across the country. But up in the hills, it's a different story. Coal companies have taken billions in profit out of the mountains. We end up making huge sacrifices. And then if you look, at the area, you see people are poor, the educational attainment is less, and often people are not as healthy. So whatever opportunity is supposed to be there, it just hasn't arrived. Today, in the depressed counties of central Appalachia, families have an average annual income less than the cost of a new car, the second lowest in the nation, and the trash, a kind of defeatism left on the lawn. But what's happened to pride? I think pride is still there, the difference between urban places and Appalachia is the availability of government resources <laughs> to pick up that trash. Mountain people I don't think have given up, but when you, when you organize and you fight and you struggle and things don't change markedly for you, then you step back and you find a way for your family to survive. And one thriving industry for survivors dealing prescription drugs. Particularly in Appalachia, we've seen it be kind of a sacrifice area where big pharmaceutical companies were able to dump drugs into the area and really get off fairly scot-free. In 2007, Purdue Pharma, the company which markets the potent OxyContin, was fined $635 million for deliberately misleading people about the addictiveness of the drug. At the time, doctors in the mountains had been prescribing it for everything from back pain to arthritis. And while Lortab and Xanax are often obtained through Medicaid, robbery often produces the OxyContin for dealers. They can make more money in one weekend here in Harlan County than they can an entire month on the big city streets of Chicago or Detroit or New York. So. Karen Engel is the executive director of the Law Enforcement and Education Initiative Operation Unite. We're told some prescription drugs like Xanax and Lortab have a street price from five to $15 per pill. But OxyContin, even if you can only get it once a month, is the prize. So what's the street value of a pill now? Of an Oxycontin? 120 uh, bucks? Yes, $120. Here, in Harlan? Yes. Our driver and undercover detective says the dealer can be anyone next door. It's just survival. It's not that I'm trying to hurt anybody or nothing, you know? I think you see drug addiction in communities where people don't see a place for themselves, don't see a trajectory. A babysitter deals Oxycontin while a child watches cartoons. A mayor indicted for trading pills for votes, so he pled not guilty. Sorry, no problem. And for every adult dealing or using drugs, a child begins to drown. Five years ago, WYMT Mountain News profiled six-year-old Erica Floyd on Mother's Day. Her mother in jail for the fourth DUI. She drinks sometimes, but that's not right for me. But I love her. Erica kept a drawer of pictures for when her mom comes home, crossing her fingers every time the phone rings. Follow me, everything is all right. I believe you. I don't know the rest. Erica then, Erica now 11 years old, still trying to help the mother, now battling addiction to Lortab and Oxycontin. She's almost 50, and if I don't get her out of this pound stone, then she'll probably die any day. Mother and daughter talk of love. Our relationship is like... Peas and carrots. <laughs> or yeah, and ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Amid the broken promises. She's all I have, and it's more to me than any, any drug, anything in this world. And I'm sorry you've had to go through this. 
Now it's not okay. Social services forces her mother into rehab. I love you. I love you too. Mommy. I love you, Mommy. <laughs> but soon, Erica's mother's back home and sliding again. And Erica can be seen walking alone through her town, which is boarded up, abandoned by the coal company. The reason I go on these walks is because I don't want to get away from my mom when she's like that. She's just vulnerable. I pick her up on the streets at night, sometimes walking. Her school counselor tells us Erica is trying to hang on in classes. I hear that you pulled your math grade up. I had an F before, then I bring it up to a C, and then now it's two points away from A. Congratulations. How about with you and your mom? You know what kind of drug she was doing? Mm -mm. Did you see her? No, she wouldn't want me to see her. But I knew it was happening. How'd you know? I had a look in her eyes when she lied to me. Why do you think she does it? Pain, misery. What would you say to everybody out there about being a kid here? You gotta make the better of it. She's still alive. That just to keep on holding on top. When we last saw her, her mother still struggling with addiction. The house where they had been living burned and they had to move out. But once more, Erica was refusing to give up hope. It's just a wake-up call from God saying it's a new start. 